Hi, hello, namaste. Welcome back to Needs of Children. We are discussing about 8th standard English medium, social science in that economics lesson number 4, government and the economy. Let's come to the what are the very important outcomes of in this lesson. In this chapter, you learn the importance of planning in promoting economic development, the success and failures of planning in India, the concept of LPG, liberalization, privatization and globalization, the major ongoing programs for development in India. So these are the very important learning points from the lesson government and the economy. Let's come to the introduction for this lesson. Government plays an important role in promoting economic development and improving the welfare of the people. So that's obviously any country government plays a very important role for the promoting of economic development as well as improving the welfare of the people. It's a duty of the government. That is the reason it undertakes a number of activities that promote growth, stability, equ equity and rule of law, rule of law in the economy. It also takes measures to overcome the problems like unemployment, poverty, inflation, lack of basic facilities and inequality. So these are responsibilities of the government for the promoting of economic development as well as improving the welfare of the people. When come to the part of India when we got the independence in 1947 so we faced a lot of problems. The problems like number one the per capita income it was very low when compared to other countries our per capita income so it was very low here it is the bar graph it is showing how we are having uh, in a dollar wise the GDP as well as the per capita income when compared to other countries it was uh, very low. And the second one food production was less than the requirement. So that is also one of the very important problem we are faced after the independence when food production it was very less for the requirement of our Indian population. So that was one of the major problem when we are attained the independence. And the third one there were a few industries especially the developed countries are it is sign of the industries because industries are very important in the modern economic activities of man. The state of economic development of any country is decided mainly by the industrial development of that country. So that is the reason when this concept in India it was a few number of industries were existed. So that is also one of the major drawback of our economic condition and much of our machines had to be imported. We don't have uh, that much equipped machines we have to be imported uh, many machineries from the other countries we have to be dependent on machines for the other countries so that is the reason it is one more the very important drawback of our indian economy and moreover transport energy communication infrastructure were insufficient so these are the basic essential development aspects of any country. So these are also very inefficient, insufficient in our country when compared to other countries. Lack of health and educational facilities, it was also one of the major drawback of our economic conditions. Apart from this, there will be a financial services were available only a few people and there was a situation of backwardness everywhere. Therefore, the removing of bottlenecks to development was crucial. 
other than that the leaders responded positively and initiated several measures to bring about overall socio economic development of the country for this purpose planning was adopted as the strategy to bring about all round progress in the economy then what is the concept of planning so what is we are see that the concept of the planning let's come to the we are going to get the concept about planning in india yes planning refers to the deliberate actions of the government to systematic allocate and utilize available resources to achieve pre determined goals in the interest to all so that is the concept we can see the planning and moreoverly planning involves the very important concepts like identification of requirements setting goals mobilizing resources and designing action plans to utilize the resources and monitor them designing the action plans to utilize the resources and monitor them and evaluate whether the goals are achieved or not so these are some of the planning it is involves the identification of requirements setting goals mobilizing resources designing action plans to utilize the resources and monitor them and evaluate whether the goals are achieved or not to perform all these activities the planning commission was established in 1950 however the planning commission was replaced by national institute for transforming india niti ayog in the year 2015 so the chairman of niti ayog the prime minister at present narendra modi ji was considered as the the chairman of niti ayog so whereas the present deputy chairman of niti ayog is considered as the rajiv kumar and here so the planning commission was adopted the strategy of preparing five year plans for giving a specific direction to the economy within the framework of mixed economy the niti ayog aims at preparing long run vision strategies as guide posts for steering economy to achieve desired goals so let's come to the here are some of the objectives of planning in india some of the general objectives of indian planning are as follows number 1 increasing the rate of economic growth the increase in national income was planned for to bringing down the poverty so that was the very important concept increasing the rate of economic growth and the second one concept bring about modernization in economy indian planning aimed at modernizing for enhancing its capacity to produce more goods and services and the third one achieve self reliance initially we were dependent on other countries for the most of our requirements especially technology food and fuel in order to avoid foreign intervention in domestic policies the planners emphasized reduction of imports by promoting domestic production somehow we have achieved self sufficiency producing requirements for our own products and food technology fuel and the fourth one reduction in the inequality of income and wealth the planners also gave importance to redistribution of wealth the economy it should be not to concentrated in the hands of few so that focus on 
ensuring that the benefits of economy growth reach the poorer sections and that every Indian is able to meet his or basic needs such as food, decent house, education and a health care are should be available for everyone. So that is the reduction in the inequality of income and wealth. And the fifth one, development of infrastructure. A greater importance was given to strengthening basic infrastructure like transport, communication, power irrigation facilities, schools, hospitals, research and extension and extension for faster and higher growth of countries. So that is the uh, development of in infrastructure especially transportation, communication, power irrigation facilities, schools, hospitals, research and extension for faster and higher showing of development of infrastructure. And the sixth one, development of financial institutions. It was aimed to establish broad based financial institutions and strengthen the same for mobilization of resources and to make them available in the priority sectors for smoother growth. For that it requires the financial institutions, nothing but banks. Banks are providing the finance and they are considered as the financial inst institutions. And the seventh one, balanced regional development. Due to many reasons, some reasons tend to remain backward to grow at slow rates. Hence, in order to help such reasons to catch up with the fast growth ones, planning in India aimed at balanced regional development is very essential. It should not be give the importance for only uh, growth and developed areas. It has to be give the balance to, for all the regional achievement, progress, development. And the eighth one, promoting private sector. Indian planning adapted a mixed economy framework and provided sufficient scope for the private sector also. Not only the government involvement, even private sector also they can be invest and work together. So that is also has given. So, so far we have almost completed the 12th 5 year plan and these plans have been implemented within the broad framework to the above objectives. But each plan has focused on a critical problems of the a period during which it was implemented. So, here it is. The above table provides the information about the plans in India. So here the first five year plan and up to 12th five year plan it has given the very important um, total quality focused areas growth target and achieved growth. So this is the table it is explains about all the five year plans the achievement. So that's it about today's session. I hope you have understood what we are discussed till now. In case if you having any doubts related to the concept to what we are discussed, you can comment in the comment box. I will solve your doubts and I will come back with the next video. Until keep watching my channel. Thank you. Have a nice day. See you in the next session. Bye-bye. Take care.